August 1955, a 14-year-old boy went to visit relatives near Money, Mississippi. Emmett Till had experienced segregation in his hometown of Chicago, but he hadn't experienced the severe segregation of the South before. He showed some boys from Mississippi a picture of a white girl and said that she was his girlfriend. One of the boys said, hey, there's a white girl in that store there. I bet you won't go in there and talk to her. Emmett went into Brian's Grocery and Meat Market and bought some candy. As he left, he said bye, baby, to Carolyn Bryant, the store owner's wife. A few days after the incident, two men came to the cabin of Moe's Wright, Emmett's uncle, in the middle of the night. Roy Bryant, the owner of the store, and J.W. Millen, his brother-in-law, took Emmett and drove away. Three days later, Emmett Till's body was found in the Tallahatchie River. He had been tied to a 75-pound cotton gin. One eye was gouged out, and he had a bullet in his head, which was crushed in. His uncle could only recognize the body as Emmett's because it was wearing his initial green. Local whites, as well as blacks, were horrified by the crime. Bryant and Millen were arrested for kidnapping Emmett even before his body was found. Newspapers and white officials stated that all civilized people were disgusted with the murder and proclaimed that justice would be done. The Emmett Till case quickly attracted national attention. Emmett's mother, Mammy Bradley, requested that the body be sent back to Chicago. She insisted on an open casket funeral so that the world could see the gruesome damage the white men did to her son. About 50,000 people saw Emmett's body at the funeral, and many more blacks across the country who might not have otherwise heard of the case were shocked by the pictures of the body that appeared in Jet Magazine. These pictures affected blacks in a way nothing else had before. Five of every six major black preachers on the radio were preaching about Emmett Till, and half of them were demanding that something be done in Mississippi. Men went on trial in Sumner, Mississippi on September 19, 1955. The prosecution, however, had difficulty finding witnesses willing to testify against the two men because at that time in Mississippi, it was unheard of for a black man to publicly accuse a white man of committing a crime. Eventually, Emmett's uncle, Mose Wright, stepped forward, and when he was asked if he could point out the men who had taken his nephew, he identified Milam and Bryant. Wright's bravery encouraged other blacks to testify against the two defendants. However, the blacks that testified had to be rushed out of the state after their testimony for fears whites would attack them. In the end, even the bravery of these blacks did not make a difference. Milner and Bryant were found not guilty for their crimes. The impact of the Emmett Till case on black America was substantially greater than any case prior to it. For the first time, northern blacks saw that the violence against blacks in the south could affect them in the north. Blacks in the north as well as the south would not easily forget the murder of Emmett Till and it is considered the catalyst for the civil rights movement. This other jet. Why do I need two jet magazines? Bye, because. baby. Yeah. Bye, baby. Bye, baby. Bye, baby. Bye, baby. Bye, baby.